Hi, my name is uh, Alan Ramos. Uh, I'm a management consultant. I work for a company called Performance Design Lab, um, located in Chandler, Arizona, where I've been for a good number of years. Uh, and I've been in the field uh, quite a while. My, my first exposure actually was in my first real job back in the early 70s. Um, I got a job with the, the uh, corporate training department at uh, Allstate Insurance, and so I, I uh, picked up Bob Maker's books there, started reading them. I went to the CRI workshop. Um, so, you know, I read a lot about performance analysis, uh, knew his take on a number of those kind of techniques, but the truth of the matter is that particular organization was all, was all about training. So a lot of, a lot of the uh, expansion of those techniques beyond training I didn't do while I was there. So I was there for a few years. Um, then I moved on to a bank. I was a training manager in a bank. And that's where I started applying um, solutions that were, that were beyond training. Uh, and one of my earliest exposures to that was when I saw a failed training uh, application kind of blew up in the, the face of management. They had spent a lot of money on technology. In fact, this was, this was the first ATM technology that came out. They trained people how to use the technology. They rolled it out, and nobody wanted to use it. Um, so it was a crash and failure. And, and, and uh, tr clearly, training wasn't the answer, because training was the only thing they had done for these folks. So I started digging into that, and I found all kinds of problems with the way they had set it up, with what they were telling customers, with the kind of incentives they had put in place, which were really contradicting what they were trying to accomplish. And it gave me my first real, I, I think, validation that there are multiple variables that you often have to deal with, that some of them are hidden, that some of them are unintentionally set up to, to, to defeat each other, et cetera. And then about that same time, I was, I, you know, was reading a lot in the field, and I started to read, in particular, I remember an article by Gary Rumler saying, you want performance, not just training. And I said, yes, that's it. And, and the reason it clicked so well is because I had experienced it. I mean, I really felt what it was like to, to, uh, to learn that. You know, and then watch the, the success of that. So it wasn't just that here's what you should do. I really saw it play out um, in, in a way that really changed the way I saw my field, which was still training. Because I went from there to Motorola. Um, I was with the group that became Motorola University. I was there with people like Guy Wallace, um, in which we were trying to create a, a grounds up uh, corporate university. Gary Rummer was brought in there uh, and started training us in his techniques and methodologies. And several of us, including Gary and I, got involved in developing what turned out to be a process improvement methodology that became very successful. For Gary, it became the methodology that he then used to launch the Rama Brace Group. For Motorola, it became the genesis of Six Sigma. And I was just lucky enough really to, to be there, uh, but that was my bridge. That was clearly then my bridge out of, out of training only solutions to, to much broader applications in the process and to, uh, and to the organization level. Um, and then and I, was, I was at Motorola for about 10 years. I was there kind of during their heyday when they, they were very successful uh, in fighting the Japanese and all that, that exciting time. Um, but uh, Gary had written his book, Improving Performance, his business started to grow, and the process field emerged from that. And so in the early 90s, I left Motorola, joined him, and I was a, uh, I was a project leader, and then eventually the head of consulting for the Rumble Bridge Group. Um, and, and spent my time doing this kind of work. So very often at the process level, uh, but quite a bit also at the organization level. And uh, one, love it, two, really believe in it believe that this changes organizations, changes people, yields, uh, when it's done right, yields incredible results. Um, and I'm a true believer. Um, my biggest influence is obviously Gary. Uh, Gary was a hero before, to me before I even met him. Uh, then, you know, I loved working with him, so he had probably the biggest influence on me. 
uh, of anybody I've worked with. But but uh, Megger also, I mean, because that was actually my first exposure, and so I didn't quite see all of the application. But then on rereading that, I mean, I could see what his contributions to the field were as well, which was making a lot of this fairly difficult stuff understandable and accessible. It's had a big impact, I, I think, as well. So those are probably the two biggest influences I, I've had. But I, I uh, learned about ISPI while I was at Motorola. I started going to local chapters, met a lot of other people, and so um, ISPIers of, of all kinds have become both friends, benefactors, colleagues, etc. and they, they have influenced me greatly um, a recent application of uh, the stuff that I do and, and that uh, Performance Design Lab does, we got asked by a big software company to, um, to apply our approach, which is really, or uh, the best term for probably is organization design, but our, one of the biggest opportunities we had to do that at all levels. So um, they were in the typical software business, they designed software, they sold it on CDs, you know, through places like Best Buy and stuff like that. So, so it was a you know, pretty classic kind of way to run a software business, but what they were getting very threatened by uh, was uh, cloud computing, right? Software as a service, and they decided either they had to get into that line of uh, business or eventually it might take take away their entire business, so if they either need to, needed to be a leader in that, or sooner or later it would kill them off. Um, so what they decided to do was create a whole product division around cloud computing, and they asked us to design the organization for that, and design the entire thing. Design the business model, design the process architecture, design all the key processes, design all the key jobs, and in addition, because they weren't quite sure how they were going to go about this, when they, when they looked at their options, they realized that they had several different ways to go. They could go directly to the market. They could partner with other providers who were actually already in the business. They could use agents. They could franchise this or maybe franchise it eventually. So there was more than one possible way to go to market. So what we ended up doing was building four different models for them. Um, so the specifics then varied according to which way they were going to go to market, but in every case we went all the way from, up from the, or from the top of the organization, all the way down to key jobs and management system and metrics, and it was very, uh, not just exciting, but satisfying because it was, it was one of the times when we didn't have the client either cutting it off short or putting something you know, kind of off limits, offline, we couldn't, we couldn't get into that. In fact, it was just the opposite. We needed to make these things as thorough as we possibly could and think through all of the problems they were going to have. So one of the things we did was bring in another consulting firm from the telecom industry, which had gone through all kinds of upheaval of the same sort because of the cell phone industry, right? So there was a new uh, industry that completely changed uh, traditional telecom, and so we had these we had these telecom folks in there sitting there, looking at our models and helping us build them. But primarily, they were there to critique the models and say, you know what, that ain't going to happen. Or you know what happens when you do this? Because the software company was not in that line; they were not in the service business. They were not a they were a product division or product company. And this all of this thinking about how you provide ongoing services and all that was their Achilles heel, but they were smart enough to know it. So it was, um, it was not just thorough, it was not just a comprehensive model, it was practical, got down to practicalities about how you're going to make this work. So for me, it was probably one of the most exciting things I, I have ever done. Um, focus, my current focus, and it's also been the focus of uh, Performance Design Lab now for several years um, is the, the merging of HPT and technology as an in information technology. Um, you, you know, you'd have to be blind not to see how much jobs are being enabled by technology. I, mean, I was just having a conversation with people in the electrical power company 
in which they were talking about line technicians, this classic blue collar kind of work, are out there with laptops and, the, and, and their smartphones and all of that. They're looking at the grid out there while they're in the field. So they're still doing what they do, but they can't do it anymore without technology. They're ex ex extremely enabled by technology. So there's an, there is a merging here of HPT and performance technology on a broader scale. That's been our focus. I think that ought to be the focus of everybody actually at ISPI. And if not, it's kind of like that software, the cloud computing thing. If you don't recognize that, you might miss the train. So uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I love talking about this kind of stuff. Thank you. <laughs>